What's poppin' everybody? We got another really good, really fun, strong, effective build video for you guys. So if you guys have been keeping up with the last few build videos, you'll know that I've kind of started to make these builds that are kind of reminiscent of the OG Oblivion classes. Now, why am I doing that? In Gold Road, we're going to be visiting a portion of the area that we were able to explore in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, right? And so back in the OG Oblivion, there are classes that are in the game. They're very stereotypical classes. It's not really like what we have in um, Elder Scrolls Online, except for Nightblade. That was actually a class back then. Um, but we didn't have things like Dragon Knight and all of that. They had different names, like the Mage, the Warrior, the Knight, the Archer, like stuff like that. So what I'm trying to do is create a challenge for myself. Now, this is the fourth build video of this kind of theme in this series. And so if you guys have seen the other ones, you'll kind of know the guardrails for creating this build. But if you haven't, basically what it is, is it's a one bar build because we are centering it around the weapon skill line specifically. We are not using any class skills at all. Now we are using passives from the classes because those passives do give us a lot of power, right? So I don't want to gimp myself in that way, but I wanted to theme these you know, classless builds around the OG kind of classes and make them tailored to the weapon skill lines. The other thing is with Gold Road, we're actually going to be getting a system called Scribing. I'm sure you've heard of it, um, but basically we're getting a brand new active ability for all of the weapon skill lines. We're also getting a couple for Soul Magic, Fighters Guild, PvP, and Mages Guild. But because of that, I wanted to create these builds with the weapon skill lines in mind. So I'm not allowed to use any other weapon skill lines, I'm sorry, any class skill lines, we are only using what's available in the weapon skill line. Today, this is going to be a tankier build, and this is the warrior, okay? So we're using the one-handed shield skill line. That means all five active abilities on there with Oaken Soul, so I can't bar swap. And then the ultimate's gonna be the one-handed shield ultimate, basically is how it works, okay? So we're trying to make this as effective as we can for Elder Scrolls Online content, and there are a number of things with this build that you'll notice um, that we kind of have to go out of our way to get because in the class skill lines, in the guild skill lines, all of that stuff, you're in with two bars, you're able to get a lot of buffs, bonuses, debuffs for enemies, utility spells outside of that. So if we don't have it directly in here, we kind of had to get creative to do that. Now, what can this build specifically do? You're not gonna be progging veteran dlc trials with this that's not how this build is going to kind of make it into the daily gameplay but everything else yeah i've used this in veteran hard mode dlc pledges i've used this in normal trials um i've used this in overland i've used this in infinite archive i've used this all over the place okay so i'll kind of explain my thought process some of it is a little bit different obviously one bar tank builds are definitely off meta um so it is gonna be a lot easier to maintain all of your abilities and to play, in my opinion. You can focus a lot more on mechanics, and in my humble opinion, it feels good, man. It's a fun, fun build to play. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. We'll start with the character sheet, okay? So we've actually got 27 points into health and 37 into stamina. Now I'll kind of explain why that is, and it kind of is centered around the race that you are. So you can be whatever race that you want. I'm a Nord specifically, but other races that are good, Imperial, Red Guard, um, Argonian, like whatever you want. But keep in mind, there is not a single ability that we're gonna be using that is actually going to benefit us from a um, using Magicka at all. Like we, you don't have to worry about Magicka at all. I'm using Bewitch Sugar Skulls, and honestly, what you could do is just use Bystat Food um, because we don't need this Magicka bonus, right? So you could use the cheaper buy stat food. I just have so much of the Bewitch Sugar Skulls in my bank that I'm like, I'll just use some of these, right? Um, but anyways, so I'm aiming for about 40k health, um, and that kind of covers you from a health perspective for, you know, if you're blocking or dodge rolling the big heavy attacks and a lot of mechanics, you're going to be able to survive with about 38 to 40k health. So once you get there with your health points, um, you can put the rest into stamina. Now, how you get there, whether it be with enchants, with all of that stuff, like kind of mix and match it, but 
I'm not worried about magic at all. So the first thing to think about is because of that, normally I would be using the tri stat enchants on the gear, but because I don't care about the magic for this build and this challenge specifically, um, I just used max health. You could use max stamina on all of your gear um, if you want and put more points into health here and not as much into stamina. It doesn't matter, whatever you want. Okay, health recovery is at 1362, stamina recovery is at 1215, and then we've got our spell resist and physical resist at over cap already, or just about cap already unbuffed. So you are very, very tanky, very sturdy, okay? Um, let's go ahead and go down. Like I said, be which sugar swirls are great, but use whatever makes the most sense to you. Our TAM takeaway broth is also fantastic. That's kind of what I would probably recommend to be the best, but it's typically a little bit um, more expensive. Um, I believe I've actually got some of the food in my bank that I'm talking about. Let's come down here real quick. So braised rabbit with spring vegetables is going to give you a lot more health and stamina, but you're not going to get any recovery out of that. But that's fine because I'm heavy attack weaving in between every ability anyways. So it's not really a huge deal if you're missing out on that stamina recovery. The lava foot soup and salt rice is going to be stamina and stamina recovery. So you'd have to get a lot more out of other stuff. But like I said, you know, use whatever feels good to you at the end of the day. If you find that this build is fun, but maybe you're struggling in a number of different regards um, from, you know, recovery. Maybe you have too much stamina. You don't, I don't know, whatever you think, ultimately. Like I said, we're using Oak and Soul. So you've got all the buffs here. One of the, there's a bunch of benefits here. Minor Ages is actually coming from one of the sets that we're using, but having things like Major Resolve, giving us 6K extra um, resist. We've got Minor Fortitude, Intellect, and Endurance. That's going to be all three recoveries boosted by 15%. We've got Minor Protection, which reduces our damage taken by 5%. We've got Minor Heroism, which is giving us ultimate every one and a half seconds. And then Minor Mending um, is going to be our healing done being boosted by 8%. Okay, we are using the Steed. Now, a lot of tanks will use the Atronach for Magicka Recovery, but like I said, there's no reason for that. You could use the Serpent if you want more Stamina Recovery. I felt fine with it, and I actually really like the feeling of having more movement speed, and the Health Recovery is like a nice little bonus. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and hop into skills. We'll do gear and then champion points last, okay? Um, Pierce armor is going to be our first ability. So like I said, real quick, you're going to get all these passives, right? Now, if you are starving for skill points, a lot of these passives are going to boost the effectiveness of a specific type of damage, like fire or poison for Dragon Knights, or they're going to boost the damage of your active abilities. Those aren't necessary, obviously, because we're not going to be using any of these ultimates. We're not using any of these active abilities, as you can see. So go for the ones that are specifically boosting something specific. So like this one, for instance, increases duration of your earth and heart abilities by 20%. That's negligible because we're not using any of these. So go through here and look at them and it won't matter as much. Battle Roar is one that you want. When you cast an ultimate ability, you restore 55 health. 50 Magicka, and 50 Stamina per point of Ultimate Spent. There's no stipulation saying that you need an Earth and Heart ability, and it's not saying when you use an Earth and Heart ability Ultimate, right? So this is across the board boosting your power as a character. That's what you should look out for. Something like this, not going to matter as much, right? So One Hand and Shield, we're using all five abilities. Now, when Gold Road actually drops and we get Scribing, one of these abilities is going to have to go because I want to replace it with the brand new customizable shield throw for um, the one-handed shield skill line, right? And we'll kind of dive into it. I'll, I'll give you my thought process for each of these abilities, why I took these morphs. Maybe you're looking at some of the morphs and you're like, why did you choose that? Um, and I'll get into it, okay? So the ultimate that we're using is shield wall, and I morphed it into shield discipline. So shield discipline specifically is going to make our one-handed shield abilities cost nothing. So I figured that's nice because the only abilities we're using are one hand and shield. Now, if you get spell wall, which is the other morph, the purple kind of variant, that's going to um, reflect all the projectiles that are thrown at you. If you prefer that, use it. It really doesn't matter. I just like the ability to have this all cost nothing because we're blocking, we're roll dodging, and we're using all these abilities and it's all stamina based. So I figured with 135 ultimate for six seconds, having no ability cost is going to be huge, right? Pierce armor. We're going to get puncture, turn it to pierce armor. This is our primary taunt, right? So you're going to stab an enemy. It's going to taunt them for about 15 seconds. It's single target. If you've been playing ESO, you'd know that they're vehemently, for whatever reason, against AOE taunting. This is our taunt, okay? 
Great, we're going to apply minor and major breaches to the enemy. This is one of the most important debuffs as a tank that you can supply for the group. You're going to basically strip off 9k resistances total between the two debuffs, um, which is almost 100% of the enemy's resistances for trash mobs and overland mobs. And then when you get to some of the bosses and dungeons and stuff, they have about 18. Um, but there's other ways that you can bring that down even further. Okay. Second ability, low slash. I like deep slash. Okay, so the other variant is heroic slash. So both of these are going to apply minor main, which is going to reduce the damage that they deal to you and other group members by 5%. So it's a fantastic ability, pretty commonly used on tank builds. The bottom, because we don't have, you know, any sort of like CC or anything, we don't have talons, we don't have like in case, we don't have anything like that, right? So I figured having some sort of CC, this is, again, it's single target, um, but it says enemies hit also have their movement speed reduced by 30% for four seconds. I figured that was going to be more beneficial than having the minor heroism. Also, considering we are using Oakensole, you get minor heroism from Oakensole, so that's a negligible effect, right? So this seemed to me to be the best of, you know, best of both worlds. Um, third ability we are using is defensive posture. I turned it to defensive stance. Okay. So this is going to be one of our damage shields that we get. It's about 15.2 K damage shield for six seconds. Um, you reflect the next harmful direct damage projectile that's cast at you, but this can only happen once per time that you bring up the shield. And then the actual reason that I like this morph is this bottom paragraph. While you have a shield equipped, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10%. So you have that cost reduction for blocking, which is huge. Newer players typically are gonna be holding block a lot more than they need to. And so this is gonna be really nice from a resource um, sustained perspective. And then also having more damage mitigation on top of your normal block is fantastic. So I like this. Shielded Assault. This is actually a really cool ability and I'm surprised it's not used more often. Um, I actually really enjoy it. So. It's a gap closer, so you charge the enemy, dealing about 4k physical damage, you stun them, and then also it gives you a damage shield for 6 seconds. So this has the exact same amount of time used um, for a damage shield as defensive stance, right? But the shield's actually bigger. So it's a gap closer, it has a very slightly higher damage shield, um, and it deals damage. The main thing for this is you kind of just slot this and don't even worry about using it, right? Because, I mean, unless you need two damage shields, these do stack, um, but I just like this better, right? So you're getting all the cool effects. This is more of like a put it on your bar, you can block more and blocking costs less, right? Last ability is mainly being used for a specific reason um, for one of the sets that we're using, um, but it is a it is a great ability, right? Strike an enemy full force with your shield, dealing about 4k physical damage and stunning them. So this is the, the reason I chose Reverberating Bash instead of the other morph. The other morph is actually going to deal a little bit more damage. Um, and it, once you use that bash, your next one will cost a little bit less. That's the other morph. This one is nice because it stuns them. So it's a stun. That's my big thing, right? So... Shielded Assault is a stun. Reverberating Bash is a stun. That's nice. We've got CC. We've got Taunt. We've got Shielding and Survivability. We've got a Gap Closer. Um, and every time this goes off, this is like a Tri-Stat Potion going off. So that's nice from a survivability standpoint. Um, so all in all, they're pretty great, right? Now, one of the stipulations that I made for all of these builds is that I was saying if I didn't have a way to heal as a part of the build naturally, then I could go out and get Vigor, but that was the only ability, right? That's the only active ability that I could get because especially in a solo capacity, especially on a DPS build, not as much with this, but especially on a DPS build, you need a, a heal a lot of times, right? We'll get into that. Passive abilities. Fortress is gonna reduce the stamina cost of your one hand shield abilities by 15% and reduces the cost of blocking by 36%. Sword and Board is gonna increase the amount of damage we can block by 20%. Um, this is going to make our bash attacks deal a lot more um, damage, not a lot, 500, and um, costs about half as much. This is going to increase the amount of damage you can block from projectiles and ranged attacks, and then this reduces the movement speed um, penalty of bracing, right? Pretty self-explanatory, no biggie. Let's hop into the gear, and I'll kind of explain um, some different things. Now, 
for the setup, we're doing an arena set, a monster set, a five piece set, a mythic, and then a two piece bonus from a random set, okay? So we are using the Vatishran sword and board. All of the gear that is defensive, so the body pieces and the shield, are going to be max health and chance. The small pieces, like the shield, the shoulders, the waist, the uh, boots, and the gloves are gonna be sturdy. And then the other pieces are reinforced, okay? So helmet, chest, and legs are reinforced, all right? We are using the sword and board from Vatishran. Now, what does this do? Whenever you use Bash, you apply Call of the Void to yourself, which pulls everybody within 12 meters to you, and then it applies Major Maim to those enemies, reducing their damage done. If you remember, so this is Major Maim. One of our abilities here, Deep Slash, is applying Minor Maim. So with this and the Vatishran Sword and Board in Trash Packs, they're effectively dealing 15% less damage to us and the group. It's fantastic. So this is gonna be our main pool ability. Also, on the weapon, we're using Crusher, which is going to reduce the target's physical and spell resistances by almost 1,000 more on top of the Minor Breach and Major Breach from um, Puncture for five seconds. Decisive is going to get us that ultimate a little bit faster. Um, and then the Perfected Bonus here gives us a little bit more max health. You don't need the Perfected Bonus. Go into Vatistran Hollows on a fun DPS build on normal. Farm this set out. It's an absolute blast. Now, this set is not used on boss fights. And the reason for that is you can't you can't pull in bosses, right? But this does, as far as I know, this does apply major maim to enemies. So if you are bashing the boss, he's right on top of you. This does apply major maim as far as I know. So you can use it if you don't have this other set. The other set is the master's sword and board. And I typically just swap them out on boss fights and non-boss fights, right? Now, if you don't really care about being super specific like that, then don't worry about it, right? But this set's pretty great. So the difference is you get more healing taken, and then every time you use Puncture, which is that single target taunt where you're kind of stabbing, um, you're healing yourself, okay? Pretty great. So instead of pulling enemies in, you're using your taunt ability, and it's healing you, right? Next, ability, or next set we're using, I know this is funny, and a lot of people are going to look at this and be like, what are you doing? What are we doing here, right? Um, I wanted to use this because with us having a chain ability via using Bash with called the Void and the Vatish Ran Sword and Board, we don't have a burst heal right now. So my thing that I thought is I could use Malubeth because you're going to be in melee range all the time anyways. It gives you more max health, and all of this is very, very easy to apply, right? When you take damage, you're taking damage all the time, okay? You have a 10% chance to tether to your enemy for six seconds as long as you remain within eight meters of them, okay? That's extremely easy on a boss fight. You are always within eight meters of the boss on a boss fight, right? While tethered, you're dealing magic damage every second to the enemy, and then you heal for that damage cost. So this is going to be healing you pretty much nonstop because this can occur every six seconds, Okay, so every six seconds, this tether is going to be going up and healing you nonstop on top of the heals that you're getting from your healer. All right. You also gain major vitality, which increases your healing received from the healer and damage shield strength, like from your, your um, gap closer ability, your shielded assault, and from defensive stance by 12%. Okay, bigger shields, healing, and more healing received. Sounds good to me for this. Now, obviously, if you're using a prototypical tank build, something like Arch Druid is going to be fantastic. And you could run that instead, right? So if you don't really care about having the pool and you just want to run around and stab everybody and have it be kind of unorganized, then you can use Puncture. You can throw Vigor on here and use Arch Druid instead of the Bash. Whatever you want. Um, now, when Scribing comes out, I'm going to have to figure out and play with it. I may actually take off defensive stance and put, um, for me personally, I like the Vatatran Sword and Board. I enjoy that feeling of organizing the fights, having everybody there, going around, slapping everybody with deep slash. And, you know, I like that play style for this build. So I'll probably end up replacing defensive stance because I already get the gap closer and the shield from this. I would just be losing the extra damage mitigation, which is fine because this build is so freaking tanky. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, so this monster set comes from Wayrest Sewers. Now, one thing I want you all to keep in mind too with this, if you guys don't have these sets and you want other suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to help out. All of these sets though, I'm gonna have something in the description. It's gonna be an ESO Hub link that shows you where all of this stuff comes from so that you can go there and look for it, okay? The next armor set that we are using is pearlescent. That's what these orbs are that you see floating around me. This is probably the most popular tank set in the game right now. It's a trial set, so it comes from Dreadsail Reef. You'll need High Isle for that or ESO Plus, but it is extremely popular to run this, um, this trial because virtually all of the gear sets from it are incredible. World of the Depths, Coral Riptide, those are two fantastic damaging sets. Pillager's Prophet is an amazing healer set. And then you got Pearlescent Ward. It's one of those trials where everything is just banging. Like it is so good. So if you go on the group finder and you're looking for trials and stuff, this is one of the most popular sets that you'll see on there. So it's very easy to get into a group, but if you don't have that stuff, let me know and I'm happy to put other options down in the comments below. Maybe you're just starting or something like that. There's tons of options I can give you for crafting. Just let me know if you're curious, okay? Like I said, the helmet, the chest and the legs are gonna be reinforced. All the other pieces are sturdy with max health and chance. We're using medium shoulders, a light helmet, and then five pieces of heavy. That way with the undaunted metal passive, which I will show you here, go down to undaunted, undaunted metal, you get 2% extra max stats per type of armor that you're wearing. So we want mainly heavy armor for the resistances and stuff like that. Um, but we want to have one of each so that we get all the max stats like this. All right. So what does Pearlescent Ward do? You get max health for the two piece, minor Aegis, more healing taken, and then you get this special bonus that persists through death called Pearlescent Ward. So basically every group member that's alive goes, uh, it, the weapon and spell damage boost that you give to your group goes up to 180. As people start dying, you start getting more damage mitigation for your entire group. You get a bunch of damage reduction for the group. So it makes it easier to kind of pick up from mistakes. So if you're progging and stuff in a high-end um, group, that's typically why that happens. But also, this is really, really good in pugs. So I do a lot of pugging. I have a lot of friends that play, but I like to do stuff randomly. Sometimes my friends don't want to run dungeons, and I do. And this is nice to play with people that maybe haven't run a DLC dungeon before, maybe haven't done a hard mode before, and it's easier to pick people up off the ground when you got all this damage mitigation, right? And the more people that have died, the more you've get, uh, the more you've received, okay? Now we're using Oakensole. All of these are going to be protective. You can use whatever you want. If you want Swift for more movement speed, if you want Triune for more stats, if you want, it, it just doesn't matter, whatever you want, okay? I have stamina recovery on all of these. Um, the two-piece bonus that I'm using comes from Knight Errant. So I just wanted the max health. It doesn't matter. Knight Errant is not the important thing here at all. So if you go into any of these sets, look at the two-piece bonus. So Veiled Heritance gives you more weapon and spell damage for the two-piece bonus. Elegant gives you weapon and spell damage. Helmet of the Twin Sisters, or this Twin Sisters set, gives you more stamina recovery right? So find a two-piece bonus in any set, preferably one that you have collected everything for, um, and because it, it'll cost less for you to do that with the 25 transmutes versus 75 when you have nothing. Um, so just find a two-piece bonus that you want for yourself. Do you want more stamina? Do you want more stamina recovery? Do you want healing taken? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Just choose whatever you like, and that was one of the sets that I just happened to have fully loaded out. I like the extra health. I thought it was good, um, and yeah. Champion points, let's hop in. Green tree, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Blue tree, we are using Duelist Rebuff, Enduring Resolve, Unassailable, and Endurance, or Endless Endurance. So this gives us more max Sam. And then all of these guys are basically just damage mitigation from different types of damage, right? The other thing is, you could also use Ironclad instead. This is another really good um, blue node, but I like the extra stamina considering every single ability we use every single damage mitigation um, technique, blocking, dodging, whatever, that's all stamina, right? So I just, more max stats is good with me. Red Tree, we're using Boundless Vitality for more max health, Fortified for more armor, which is resistances. I'm using Bastion, that gives us more effectiveness with our damage shields. Um, and then I'm also using Celerity in here, which increases our movement speed. 
Other things you could use, Bloody Renewal, if you want some stamina after each kill. You could use Strategic Reserve for more health recovery. Um, and Spirit Mastery is another good one if you're constantly having to pick people up in pugs, right? That's pretty much it. Very, very simple build. Um, obviously, you'll be able to max out your one hand and shield skill line very quickly, having put all of this on the bar um, and, you know, getting a damage or a, a one hand and shield like this. Um, but yeah, this is this has been extremely fun to put together. Honestly, I've really enjoyed this challenge. I've had a really good time with Bo. I've had a really good time with the Destruction Staff, Resto, One Hand and Shield. I'm still trying to figure out the best builds for the two-hander and for dual wield because I don't want to give y'all a build like this that's not pulling at least like 75 to 80k DPS. The best that I'm able to get with just two-handed abilities right now is 65 with like very, very high-end gear just because the abilities just don't really lend themselves to being very, very good damage abilities right now. And then the you know, dual wield ones, I'm still just putting it together, right? The big thing with dual wield is not necessarily going to be damage. I think the damage will be fine, but I think the survivability will be an issue. I definitely think it's one of those classes I'll have to get um, vigor onto there or something. But yeah, this has been absolutely a blast putting all this stuff together. I hope y'all are enjoying these as much as I am. Remember, these are off meta. These are fun builds a good way to play the game, an easy way to play the game, and just a way to spice things up, right? I'm not progging veteran trials with these. That's not what this is. I have separate builds for all that kind of stuff. This just is a fun way to play the game on the side, right? So I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for the support. If you have any questions about the build, let me know. Written guides wise, I will be including a written guide to this in the description. I am out of space on ESO Hub, so I actually have to buy more slots, which I don't want to do. So I'm physically writing out everything for y'all in the description, along with including the ESO Hub links to the armor sets that I'm using specifically. If you guys have any questions, again, let me know. Thank you for watching. Peace and love, baby. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.